Then, we were told that enlargement of NATO to Eastern European countries will be a way of improving relationships with... Just show the Kremlin check already? Dude, fuck Vladimir Putin, okay? You're a fucking idiot. Oh, my God. Ban him. Ban everybody that says I'm a Russian operative or something, okay? I don't like Vladimir Putin. Here, I'm just going to put a fucking text message above my screen that says hassle, hassle, Russia hassle, bad, hassle. okay? Russia is bad, okay? I'm just going to put that there because, like, some of you fucking dickhead brain dead... Okay, here you go. Actually, no, not Russia is bad. Vladimir Putin is bad. Okay, are Let's you happy? I hope this will be like, like helpful for you. I hope this will be like understandable for you so that like it gets through your thick fucking skull because some of you fucking idiots are like, I mean, you just behave like children. You just don't understand. It's like good guys and bad guys, good guys and bad guys, good yeah, guys and bad guys. Like Who's the villain points. of the story? Vladimir Putin's the villain of the story. He's just like Hitler. Everyone, every one of America's enemies is just like Hitler, okay? Like, Vladimir Putin is bad, motherfucker. That doesn't change the reality that, like, we are also bad. And what we are doing is actually making a bad situation worse. Okay, shut the fuck up. Go get yourself a nice came to Russia. I asked him how the Americans would react <laughs> to the idea of Russia joining NATO. Yeah, he even fucking asked the Russia exactly to join NATO and they said no. No brain here. <coughs> but it was moderate. Of such a welcoming and chat. Hope everyone here is doing well. And then you know what happened. They supported the terrorists, on the contrary. They did not listen to our requests as far as the missile treaty was concerned. And this raises the question, why do all of this? You don't want us to be allies? Why do you want to make us your enemy? There's only one answer to this. It has nothing to do with our political regime. It's just that they do not want to have a major independent country like Russia. That's the source of U.S. policy towards Russia. This is why they have this attitude concerning security. All you have to do is to look at a map to see how America keeps... Aren't you ignoring the Russians' actions in this situation? We are pushing it, but we aren't the ones on the verge of invading another country. Dude, Russia is doing military exercise in the exact same way that America does military exercises all around the world. It's a show of force and it's fucking gross. But the reason why Russia is doing military exercise is because NATO has been expansionist. The Ukrainian government has quite literally fucking said, we're going to overtake Crimea again. Crimea is literally just Russian territory. Don't give a fuck if you don't consider it that way. But that's the reality. The people in Crimea feel that way. The Crimean Navy feels that way. The Crimean military bases that were Russian military bases until historically and still to this day feel that way. You can't just be Ukraine and be like, it doesn't matter. My constitution decided and declared that like Crimea is actually not Russian territory, regardless of how many fucking people live in, how many Russians live there. And regardless of the fact that those people want to be back with Russia, we don't care. We're going to fucking invade it. If you say something like that, of course, he's going to fucking flex his dick. He's not a good guy. He's a bad guy. Okay. Throw the question marks all you want. I don't give a fuck about the Ukrainian constitution. I don't give a fuck about the Ukrainian like border sovereignty that some of you dumbasses are fucking talking about like you're you're like a three percenter but for ukraine okay it's so stupid crimea is not the same as kiev however crimea is not the same as the rest of ukraine however eastern ukrainian territories have a lot of fucking russian people living in them because ukraine and, and just like crimea and much of the rest of the fucking country was a part of russia was a part of the ussr until not that long ago okay People's parents were alive back then. So obviously, there's a lot of fucking Russian people living there. So if you have a country that now has beefed up its Western interests, which is fine, okay, without neutralization, with, uh, that, that is not, that is not uh, abiding by the, the prior agreements that they've had, you have constant fucking separatist fighting going on, which is a proxy battle, as uh, the, the lady on Democracy Now! this morning explained, a proxy battle in eastern Ukraine so you can take the has and stick it up rather a gas. civil war in eastern Ukraine has turned into a proxy battle, which has now turned into a geopolitical struggle that is international, okay? It's fucking insane.
It's insane. Because America is like pulling the fucking strings and making it a much larger uh, uh, deal than it should be because America wants a fucking weak Ukraine. That's the reality. America wants a weak Russia and America wants a weak Ukraine. It doesn't matter if Russia and Ukraine duke it out. It doesn't matter if Russia and Ukraine fuck each other in the Six asshole months, nonstop in this like Ouroboros ass fuck because America gets to sell guns and America gets to also fucking, uh, uh, you know, have a weakened foreign adversary on the other side of the world. Okay. It's great. It's great. It's great for America. That's why they're fucking beefing it up over and over again, saying Russia's going to invade tomorrow. Russia has kill lists. And some of you are too young and you don't know this. You don't know how many lies that the State Department has fucking made the media tell. But the very same motherfuckers that are like, oh my God, uh, you know, Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. We have to immediately invade Iran, uh, Iraq right now are the exact same people who are like, dude, I have sources that are saying that Vladimir Putin wants to straight up have sexual intercourse with every family member of the Ukrainian administration. Every single one of them. We have high level sources. It's going to happen. It's going to happen after he invades. Okay. And it like hasn't happened yet. And it's probably not going to happen because of the underlying material circumstances that would make war in Ukraine impossible to deal with. This would be attrition. This would fucking destroy the Russian economy. They would get fucking, they would get ass fucked by sanctions, uh, which are already coming regardless, okay? And you can be a fucking baboon and say, this is imperialism, pro-imperialist takes again, because you are a baboon, okay? You are, I'm sorry. You are a stupid anarchist idiot who only learns politics by repeating talking points from either myself or other YouTubers that you have watched, okay? I'm sorry. You do not have the mental fortitude or the capacity to comprehend complex foreign politics uh, 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 you know, complex foreign policy from anything beyond an American exceptionalist standpoint where we are the civilizing force on these barbarians, okay? You are the guy who gets conscripted and gets uh, just completely blasted in the fucking smithereens uh, in, in like the 17th century. That's it. You think you're progressive. You're not fucking progressive. You literally are meddling with other countries' foreign policies. You're meddling with other countries and then you're thinking that, oh, we're doing this in a progressive way. You're doing progressive imperialism while pointing to fucking Russia and, and saying they're doing imperialism, okay? Russia's annexation of Crimea is not the same as imperialism. It's not the same as colonialism. You are a fucking psycho. There has never been a circumstance in which an imperial power has decided to take oh, over land right. where the fucking people living in that land are their own people, okay? And the country's entire military is like oh yeah this is great finally we can like work with our own fucking country and we speak the language and it's our country and we want to actually uh, join and then they also fucking uh correspond Jesus to Christ, numerous surveys time and time again year over year over year leading up to fucking the crimean annexation and even after the crimean annexation saying no it's good we want to be a part of russia it's fucking insane you could say that's like russian propaganda or whatever but like you Feeling bad about the Crimean annexation does not change the reality of the Crimean annexation being a completely justifiable fucking act by the Russian government, okay? So that's it. That's fine. And Hitler invaded countries based on Germanic ties at first? Yeah, dude. Talk to me when he's fucking throwing Ukrainians in a, in a, in a fucking... What are you talking about? Talk to me when he's throwing Ukrainians at a concentration camp, okay? Hitler wasn't fucking bad because he decided to invade Austria. He was bad because he was fucking killing Jews, okay? That was the problem. He wasn't like, he wasn't like, oh yeah, we're going to fucking annex territory with like Germanic people in it. That wasn't the main problem with Hitler, I think. That was like maybe eighth down the line. On the many lists of issues with Hitler, his one fucking, like, territorial expansion that you point to over and over again is the stupidest thing you can point to. It's like literally being like, well, dude, Hitler built the Autobahn. Yeah, he did. He did do that. He wanted to fucking continue prior projects because guess what? You know, he wanted to move tanks easily throughout Germany. That doesn't make him a socialist, though. It's so weird. It's like, oh, dude, dude, they took over. 
They took over uh, Austria, dude. They took over Austria. Like, what the fuck? It's like, okay. Nine months brain rot is Was that the reason? Seven. Was that the problem? It's the Candace Owens take? Yeah, literally. It is the... Wait, you're saying I'm saying the Candace Owens take? No, because I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, like, Hitler had a lot of fucking problems, okay? Way before we talk about, like, Austria. Candace Owens was saying Hitler just wanted What's to make Germany great again. again. <laughs> like, you're completely avoiding all of the other shit that Hitler did that is so much worse. That because you just want to fucking make a Hitler comparison. That's it. Oh, so if Hitler just didn't do the Holocaust and just as did the war against slim everyone slim and tried to take over all of Europe, rant, it would have been fine. Wait, what? Rant has baited, has baited, has what? Baited, I never baited, said that. Baited, kept, no, as a matter of fact, I'm saying has kept, has kept, has kept. Hitler's annexation of Austria is not even offensive in comparison to the actual problems with what Hitler did. So stop comparing Six Hitler's months, annexation months, of Austria away, to fucking Vladimir Putin's annexation of Crimea. That's the point. Why are you not hearing what I'm saying? Why is the point just escaping your brains so aggressively? Okay? It's very, very strange. It's very, very strange to, to try to like desperately grab on to any kind of fucking... To, to any kind of fucking thing that you can to just be like, this is terrible. I'm not even saying Vladimir Putin is good. He's not good. He's not a good person. He's a bad person, okay? He's a bloodthirsty, crazy person, okay? But he's also, I mean, he's not crazy in the same way that, like, he's doing foreign policy. He's not like, oh, yeah, I'm Vladimir Putin. I'm going to do nukes now. Like, it doesn't work that way, okay? I am not a Vladimir Putin apologist. Shut the fuck up. I want to fucking, I, I just, I, oh, God. I should hear we <sighs> not like this. Vladimir Putin is bad. Vladimir Putin is bad. Vladimir Putin is bad. This doesn't change the reality of Crimea. Vladimir Putin is not bad because of Crimea. Vladimir Putin is bad for a million other things. You're literally doing the exact same thing that you did with Hitler a second ago with Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is hyperpog. Vladimir Putin is a horrible authoritarian leader, okay? May or may not have seized power with a false flag attack that killed a lot of fucking people. Uh, a false flag uh, uh, terror attack. Okay, there are a there are a list of like a million different fucking things that you could point to about why he's a bad person before you even uh, like get to Crimea. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. Vladimir Putin is bad. Okay, he's bad. He's bad. This is why all your viewers went to misgive because your political takes are garbage. Lamau. What? Are you, are you saying misgives political takes are good? Like what? What a strange, what? Implication that Miskiff is good at politics here? What the fuck is... Anyway, it's just like, I, I despise, here's the problem. I fucking despise anytime I talk about foreign policy, anytime I go against the prevailing narrative that you hear on MSNBC, anytime I do that, everyone fucking loses their shit because ultimately I hate to admit this, but Glenn Greenwald is kind of right. A lot of people in the American left, in the Imperial core unironically at this point glenn greenwald's kind of right unironically are just pro-imperialist huh. huh. they legitimately believe the fucking state department propaganda hook line and sinker there is a reason why bernie sanders agrees with me noam chomsky agrees with me numerous other fucking thinkers on this uh, on the subject that you would normally point to as like really good really sane people agree with me and not the fucking Seven bread tubers that you are coming at uh, you're, you're coming in here to repeat the fucking passed. takes of uh, jeremy corbyn Okay, we're not fucking shills of Vladimir Putin. Our worldview is directly the opposite. 
of Vladimir Putin's worldview. He is an oligarch. He's one of the wealthiest motherfuckers on the planet. Why in the ever-loving fuck would I ever defend him? This is entirely separate. But you don't have any way of comprehending politics other than, oh, you're defending this person. You, you must be defending this person because you think, or you just hate America and that's why you're like running Your defense for Vladimir so Putin. Today. That's not the case, okay? Putin is not a good person. He's a horrible monster, okay? And so is America. And the reality here is the people of Ukraine are stuck between two fucking forces. And there are plenty of countries that have been able to successfully neutralize. Countries, of course, that don't have Russian speakers and Russian people living in them that have a history of being a part of a broader fucking Russian empire, if that's what you want to call it. Certainly, like Finland. But the ultimate goal here is neutralization to have a buffer zone that is not even that's not a directly a part of NATO, regardless of whatever the fuck the Ukrainian government's interests are. OK. Because NATO, no matter how much you describe NATO as a as a defensive force, is not a defensive force. It is an offensive force. That's the whole point. They train uh, weapons they onto and Ukraine have house. encircled uh, which Russia. Vladimir Putin said. Uh, in, in a long pre-recorded address are recognized as being independent from Ukraine. Well, despite the uh, large numbers of Russian troops of surrounding uh, Ukraine and its borders, uh, Russia has continued to deny it has any plans really to attack neighboring health. Ukraine. Thank you for but has long threatened awesome. unspecified action in the in. absence of security guarantees from the West. Well, amongst those guarantees, a pledge that Ukraine would never join NATO. Well, earlier on in the day, the president convened his top He's officials in Moscow for a presidential Security Council meeting. Uh, this, of course, in the context of a spike in tensions in eastern Ukraine, which Western powers have been saying could be used by Moscow as a pretext for an attack on Ukraine. So there we can see uh, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, who has uh, signed those do, decrees uh, recognizing Donetsk and Luhansk as being independent uh, regions independent of uh, Ukraine. Um, I'm here in the studio with Craig Koperas, who is a this to courts, uh, seeing months. seeing uh, uh, Donetsk or or uh, seeing the eastern Ukrainian territories that are majority Russian as separate regions is going to cause a fuckload more problems if neutralization agreements do not happen immediately. Okay. That is a diplomatic escalation. That is a soft power escalation that will create a, create a situation where, oh yeah, we have to fucking protect these territories. We have to protect these territories. That is a fucking step in the wrong direction. Okay? That is absolutely the, 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 the case here. They aren't majority Russian. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it's not like Crimea. They're, they're, you're right. You're right. You're right. This isn't like Crimea. This is not like Crimea at all. Claiming that, claiming that you uh, have to, here's, here's what I'm afraid of. Crimea is entirely separate from this conversation. But when you talk about the Eastern Ukrainian territories where there are big chunks of Russian people, okay, there are big chunks of Russian people. My fear is that this will be similar to Georgia. And then he'll say, oh, we need to actually defend these territories, and I'm that's why we need to fucking bring uh, people in. That's why we need to bring in, uh, you know, our forces, our military, to protect these Russian people. Okay? And that's not good. That's not good at all. This is an aggressive action that Vladimir Putin has taken. Okay? This is different than just doing posturing, saber-rattling, military exercise at the border. This actually is aggressive action. Okay. Imagine, uh, quite a lot of what President Putin said this evening uh, sent a chill through uh, people in Kiev. I go hard. Putin is fully aware NATO will never invade Russia. All of his advisors know this as well. No one in the right mind believes NATO will attack Russia. Russia has more military on that front than NATO and thousand nuclear weapons. This is about regaining peace of the Russian Empire. The entire beginning of the speech was about how Ukraine should have never even been recognized as a separate republic in the first place. We'll watch the entire speech now. How is what he just did the West's fault? I need your actual take here. The West's fault in this circumstance 
is letting America fuck up the conversation from the goddamn jump yes, and not right. actually immediately move towards diplomatic stances and allowing uh, like a, a new Minsk agreement or or some sort some form of fucking neutralization. Okay, exactly what France and what Germany was trying to fucking do, and not what America was trying yes. to do, which was, ah, they're fucking crazy. They're going to invade any time. They're invading tomorrow, brother. Let's fucking go. They're invading, motherfucker. They're going to kill everybody. I heard they're, they're eating babies. The Russian army's going to invade. Then they're going to eat your babies in Ukraine. Yo, I wore my that was the fucking the issue, okay? And that's burning. precisely what the fuck has been going on for the past two months. I hate what Ukraine has made you become. What? Become what? This is me. This has always been me. God damn 17 months, baby boy. Where has the time gone? It's crazy. It's like... It's like you come to one of the oh, fucking like prominent anti-imperialist voices in America, on the left, and you're upset that I'm, like, having a conversation that, that is, is, uh, you know, anti-imperialist. Like, of course. The West Fort, the West forced Putin to blood and soil Ukraine law? No, you fucking idiot. Also, he's not blood and soiling Ukraine. Shut the fuck up. Don't you think that if the conflict does ignite, history will remember all the posturing and saber rattling as initial aggressive actions? Your take wasn't bad, but hindsight is 2020, and while it could go either way, it's still apparent that you were not entirely correct in your earlier read of the situation. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter what fucking history remembers. You're just admitting that, like, my earlier read wasn't correct Another because I, I engaged in, in proper analysis, travel. which I still believe, which is Vladimir Putin rolling fucking tanks into Ukrainian territory is absolutely unfathomable. The goddamn American government literally said they're going to take all the way to Kiev. Okay? If my analysis is wrong, whose fucking analysis is right in this situation? Joe Biden has been... Joe Biden literally said, we have reports that he wants to go all the way into fucking Ukraine, take the entirety of Ukraine. What the fuck are you talking my about? People happy Arjan and chat happy Monday, my love's hassle. Has mods. You're already getting clip chimped on Twitter by other debate bro YouTube fuckheads. Dude, okay, here's the other problem, okay? Nobody fucking ultimately cares about this, except for, like, this audience of people who are like, oh my god, you know, I have a stance on this that is unchanging. I have already admitted that if I'm wrong, if this fucking invasion does occur, then I will admit that I was wrong. It, it's not, like, the end of the fucking world, okay? But this, this idea that, like, uh, you know, this is important when it's a hyper fucking, it, it's literally like a, like a microcosm of the larger conversation uh, uh led by people who for the rest of the time talk about like ethical child porn or whatever the fuck and have these endless debates and how normans will be like looking back at this and be like wow hassan was so fucking wrong is idiotic okay i keep forgetting chat aren't leftists but motherfuckers who just want healthcare and free college they aren't anti-imperialists yeah exactly but the problem is american uh uh, the problem with like American leftists is that, of course, they they Putin grew up in the imperial core. It's it's, it's so very very difficult for them to shake that it off. Is. It's uh, it's almost more difficult for them to shake that off than shake off the fucking uh, uh, the the notion that they have to live in a capitalist society. Also, I forgot to fucking blast off. So here's the take. I mean, here's the, my tweet uh, that uh, I tweeted out saying that I'm live and alive. So, people will just move on to yelling at you for your next purchase? Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Why did chatters watch these cringe ass YouTubers and then come cry about them in your chat? I don't know, dude, because they're fucking cringe, okay? And that's it. The unfortunate reality is that this is a cringe community. We do talk about politics um, on the internet, so there's going to be some fucking cringe motherfuckers. Um, you are so fucking NA, it hurts. The whole concept of international law isn't going to make Crimea wrong, eh? Dude, inter you can't say I'm so North America and then bring up international law as though we respect international law here. Big two it's zero very five. weird that a lot of people are, are repeating what you hear on MSNBC, what John Bolton believes, what you know, like the, the entirety of the neocon foreign policy class believes, and then telling me that my take is the, you know, my take is the NA one, the out of touch one. Yo. Okay. That's weird. Has he Anyway, pro NATO leftists or liberals who are horny for internet drama? Yeah, it's so stupid. Hassle. Alternative take to yours Biden's was a good statement. Either Russia invades, at which point he looks right, or they don't invade, at which point Russia was curtailed by the West. Heads, uh, Biden wins, tails, Russia loses. Exactly. But the point is, if Russia did not have fucking, Wicked. if Russia was engaging in the same exact fucking military actions that they engage in every goddamn year with no interest in actually fucking invading Ukraine and they don't end up invading Ukraine, then Biden escalated a conflict to a position where they were actually going to fucking, you know, where they, where they made it seem like, uh, you know, Today Vladimir is Putin is going to invade Ukraine. The entire, what ha needs to happen right now is neutralization. That's it. That's it. So instead of fucking constantly and consistently giving you guys my goddamn fucking takes on this, I've decided instead of talking about this shit, what? I, I just want to show you other people who I guess agree with me on this issue because it is uh, deeply, deeply, deeply frustrating it to have constantly fucking talk about this issue uh, over and over and over again, okay? Uh, it, it's just, I know that a lot of the liberal, uh, you know, baby leftists, uh, care more about the aesthetics than anything else. So if they hear like people that they love and respect, like uh, fucking I don't know Noam Chomsky or all these other people, maybe then they will understand where I'm coming from with my, uh, with my like actual anti-imperialist point of view. One in. But there was. Quid pro quo that Germany, that NATO would not move one inch to the east. That was the phrase that was used in the interchanges, meaning to East Germany. And uh, on that condition, uh, they went forward. NATO immediately moved to East Germany uh, when Gorbachev vigorously protested naturally. By the way, by the way, remember, this is literally what. Uh, this is literally what Vladimir Putin was saying. Like he was, he was saying this in his speech earlier. Okay. So just remember that. He was informed by the United. I don't know where this is coming from. Oh my God. Where is this fucking coming from? It's so fucking cringe. Oh, that's where it was coming from. Got it. Okay. It states that it was only a verbal commitment. It wasn't on paper. Uh, exchanges, meaning to East Germany. And uh, on that condition, uh, they went forward. NATO immediately moved to East Germany. Uh, when Gorbachev vigorously protested, naturally, uh, he was informed by the United States that it was only a verbal commitment. It wasn't on paper. The impl unstated implication is if you're naive enough to think you can make a gentleman's agreement with us. Also, the, un the other part of the reality is even if it was like literally That's a written right. agreement that NATO would never expand, 
Do you think that they would not find a way to violate that? Who gives a fuck? Like, who, who absolutely gives a fuck? Okay? Like, you can't even... People are coming in here and being like, mm, actually, fact check. No such agreement actually ever happened. Like, okay, does that change the reality that NATO is still an expanding aggressive force, aggressively posturing against Russia? I don't understand. Like, what does your fact check mean in this situation? The Soviet I Union like is fucking it. done, and NATO is still encircling Russia. Why would I... Like, what, what does your fact check change about that? NATO's involvement in Libya and Afghanistan. Fact check. Uh, it's actually a defensive force. It's your problem. We're going to watch the fucking psychotic first half of the speech as well. They didn't say that. I'm saying that. Uh, but the uh, NATO moved to East Germany uh, under Clinton, moved right up to Russia's borders. Just a couple of weeks ago, uh, U.S. Um, military uh, equipment was uh, taking part in a, uh, a, a military parade in Estonia, a couple hundred yards from the Russian border. Uh, Russia surrounded by uh, uh, U.S. Uh, offensive weapons. Sometimes they're called defense, but they're all offensive weapons. And the idea that uh, uh, the uh, the new government in Ukraine that uh, uh, took over after the former uh, uh, government was overthrown, uh, last December, late December, it passed a resolution overwhelmingly, I think something like 300 aid or something, uh, announcing its intention to take steps to join NATO. Uh, for uh, no Russian leader, uh, no matter who it is, could tolerate Ukraine uh, right at the geostrategic uh, center of Russian concerns, joining a hostile military alliance. I mean, we can imagine, for example, how the U.S. would have reacted, say, during the Cold War if uh, uh, the Warsaw Pact had extended to Latin America and uh, Mexico and Canada were now uh, planning to join the Warsaw Pact. Of course, that's academic because the first step would have led to a violent U.S. response and wouldn't have gone any further. This is an older video. This is like a way, way older video. Example, how the U.S. would have reacted, say, during the Cold War if uh, uh, the war so the entirety of the West Ukraine gives a fuck. Like, bro, how fucking dumb are you? Holy shit. The only reason why you just can't accept this is because you're avoiding the top of the hour. Break. Fuck you, dude. It's not even top of the hour yet. Okay. I've mentioned this uh, before, but let me repeat it one more time. Okay, a reminder that the Cuban Missile Crisis was uh, nearly identical to the circumstance where America put NATO ally Turkey, America put fucking missiles pointing at the USSR in NATO ally Turkey. Okay, they put missile bases in Turkey pointing directly at Russia. Well, not Russia, but the USSR at the time. As a retaliation to that, as a retaliation to that, what is this change VOD title? All right, what did I change the VOD title? As a retaliation to that. 11 months of the, the, uh, uh, Nukes, not just missiles. As a retaliation to that, Russia built, or Russia sent, uh, like, old-ass fucking missiles into uh, Cuba, okay? This caused the Cuban Missile Crisis. You this is bro. where, like, this is how it originally started with America using NATO to flex its fucking might, America using uh, its allies to flex its fucking might against the USSR. NATO originally was created because the USSR was an unpredictable force of evil, okay? It was an unpredictable force of evil, and what we had to do was, uh, you know, align every fucking nation state we can against this communist force that was spreading ideologically and also offering material help to other countries that were having their own very democratic socialist, okay, revolutions. That is precisely what the NATO's, in, uh, that's precisely what NATO was designed to do, and that's precisely what NATO is still trying to do to this day, even though Russia is no longer a communist country. The USSR is not a real thing. Russia is a, a Russia has a fraction of the power that it once had. It's just a nuclear power. 
Okay? That's it. So for a lot of you to turn around and say, uh, oh my God, NATO is so fucking pogger. It's so pogger. I love NATO. I'm a leftist, by the way. I, I, I don't know where you're coming from. Democratic Socialist USSR? No. USSR is not Democratic Socialist. Okay? The USSR had a lot of fucking problems. They had a lot of issues. But the real thing, but the real reason why America and Western capitalists were against the USSR was not because of their mismanagement, okay, of grain stocks. It was not because uh, they were, uh, you know, uh, under, especially under Stalin, a, a brutal uh, authoritarian uh, fucking country to live in. It was because they were offering material support and spreading uh, the ideology of communism and socialism around the world, which was a problem for especially in third world and developing nations, which is a problem for fucking capitalist nations who wanted to seize all of that land, okay? That was it. That was the difference. That was the reason why they were fighting against the USSR, because there was a Six counterbalance in the world during the fucking Cold War where a large nation state that could match up with the United States of America and even some of the fucking Western capitalist powers... They could actually fucking offer support to other countries that were like, I'm socialist. I want to do socialism. I want to nationalize my fucking extraction industries. Okay. And then that big dick fucking USSR could like send them fucking money and weapons and, and offer them training and help. But America did not like that. Bring someone on that can talk some sense to you. You're going full Spotify. I think a lot of you are completely oblivious to this reality. A lot of you have not been here the million different times I've had these conversations uh, about like uh, third world liberation and about how the United States has extracted or how Western capitalist nations have extracted natural resources from the third world regularly. Okay. It's kind of fucking weird. And the idiots that say Hassan becoming based because a lot of you fucking dumb, like ultra tanky motherfuckers don't realize that this is a consistent position I've held. Okay. This is a consistent position I've held since day one. Why the fuck do you think I get canceled all the goddamn time? Idiots. Okay. Just because I'm not some fucking weirdo who like denies that like North Korea is kind of a shitty fucking place to live in. Okay. It doesn't change the reality. Just because I'm not like fucking being like, ooh, Jusha, it's the best ideology. It's great. Even though it's not even fucking Marxist Leninist. doesn't change the reality that like, I have a, a different understanding of Western exploitation, Western, uh, Western imperialism, and capitalist exploitation and capitalist imperialism in the third world than like 90% of these fucking social Democrats who are like living in the fucking imperial core. Obviously they have this take because ultimately it goes that? against their best interest to fucking uh, to, to recognize and admit this. There's a reason why there's so many fucking people that are coming from unique backgrounds that are still in here uh, for a very, very long time. 16 months above the RA. Okay. Let's continue. Well, pact had extended to Latin America. Also, people keep saying it was Ukraine's own choice to join NATO. Okay, well, it was Crimea's own choice to fucking join right. Russia then. Like, you can't fucking be like this region of just predominantly overwhelming majority Russian people with, uh, with a fucking military that is like literally Russian, with a military that joined the Russian military immediately after the annexation that is time and time again fucking consistently polled on being a part of russia that's doing better now under russia than it was and then turn around and be like oh it was ukraine's choice to fucking join nato <laughs> anyway the real choice here is the top of the hour ad avoidance you could say yikes all you fucking want you can say yikes all you want crimea it was annexed crimea was annexed chat. yeah it was so crazy that like no one fucking died shut the fuck up and like everyone thinks it's they wanted to be a part of Russia. They were a part of Russia until, like, most of your parents were alive when they were a part of Russia. They wanted to be a part of Russia. It's always been a separate, autonomous fucking region, regardless, just because you don't understand the fucking history and you keep saying, yikes, 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 yikes. my favorite YouTuber told me something different, doesn't change the reality of what's going on in Crimea. You live in fucking Ohio, okay? You are not Crimean. You are not Ukrainian. You are not Russian. The motherfuckers that live there are literally like, no, we want this. And you're like, I do not consent.
Because I defend the Ukrainian sovereignty, brother. The Ukrainian oh, borders. Months, okay, blood Ukraine and soil for Ukraine, Sorry brother. I'm that. joining the Thanks Azov Battalion. I'm a three percenter. Shut the fuck up. Capital. Shut the fuck up. I see a lot of things differently, especially regarding oh. social safety nets. Anyway, let's continue. Let's Hell continue. Yeah. 19 okay. Posting cringe in the chat. Also, NATO and Putin can. You must show evidence that Crimea, crimes. more importantly, the Crimean. Uh, you must show evidence of Crimea, more importantly, the Crimean people, uh, people, the referendum was illegitimate. No, of course the referendum was illegitimate. It happened under duress. Okay, I'm not a fucking asshole. I'm not an Please idiot. I'm not going to sit here and be like, ooh, there was a Crimean referendum. That doesn't matter. The referendum doesn't even matter. Do you want to know why the referendum doesn't matter? Because there have been numerous fucking polls since then by Western countries and Western NGOs that routinely want to fucking make it seem like Crimeans want liberation from Russia. And yet, for some fucking weird reason, all of those polls that Western NGOs that have very clear interests in making it seem like Crimea wants to separate from Russia keep showing the reality that Crimeans want to be a part of Russia. So you cannot consent to their fucking liberation, okay? You cannot consent as an American Three to their attitude. That is imperialist. Okay? No more brain rot than normal, I think. The real problem is Luhansk and Donetsk, okay? I'm fucking it up. That's the real issue. That's the- Crimea is not a fucking issue. Shut the fuck up. Like, Crimea is not a Enjoying thing. You're just- you're- you yourself are- Freaking the fuck out about all this shit for no fucking Shut reason, up. okay? Stop bringing up Crimea. It, it, it doesn't even make your point look good. Thank you. It's the inverse of the I consent meme you America made for Dead. Dark Viper AU. West NGOs when Assan doesn't like them, literally CIA. Western NGOs when they support Assan's argument, fair and accurate. Hey, you fucking idiot. My argument is Western NGOs have historically been aligned with the fucking CIA and like civil society organizations are oftentimes utilized by Western imperialist capitalist countries and Western state departments exclusively to fucking drum up support when there's like real revolutionary action, real revolutionary spark in countries, okay? Real uncertainty, real anger, real volatility. Hey. It's oftentimes utilized that is oftentimes utilized to create a much larger fucking movement, okay? This is something I talk about all the goddamn time. That's the, precisely the reason why I'm pointing out to the Western NGOs, because they have every fucking interest in making it seem you're not hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth. And this is really, this is really a, a problem. Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth, okay? They have every interest to make it seem like the fucking Crimeans don't want to stay with Russia. And yet they still consistently show that they want to. Okay? Hasley if they're fucking... If they're, if they're... Uh, oh, fuck. I should have never put that thing. Oh my god, I just ripped off so much hair from my head. Holy fuck. If those NGOs... You showed dog people anyway. if those NGOs actually fucking showed that Crimeans do not want to be a part of Russia, then I would be like, yeah, like clearly, they, of course they're gonna say that. Of course they're gonna say that. Of course those NGOs are gonna show that. Okay, because this is their best Apparently, interest, and even Putin's then they're not bad. showing that. Why is it so difficult for you to comprehend this? Anyway, it doesn't matter. People born in 2004 are currently arguing with you about Ukraine. Yeah, it's true. It, that's literally true. Boy, a whole season of has. Um, please ignore this drama baiting bullshit from Chad with other streamers. It's all telephone game silliness. Show your integrity if you're wrong. Yeah, it's true. So like I've had, like that's I've said time right. and time again. Like I've said time and time again, like if I'm fucking wrong, I'll admit it. I, I get things wrong all the fucking time. Okay. I get things wrong all the fucking time. And when I do, I admit it.
Let's take a look at what the ABC News special NATO report is saying about uh, about Ukraine now, though, because while uh, so many fucking people, while so many people kept saying like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Russia is going to invade Ukraine anytime now, Russia is going to invade anytime now, uh, that, and that has yet to happen. This is an escalation from the Russian side. This is what happened today. What happened today. is the the biggest escalation from the uh what happened today is going to be the biggest escalation from the russian side everything leading up to this is insignificant in comparison to what happened today okay the recognition of eastern ukrainian territories that have a decent chunk of russian people living in them that is an escalation military uh border okay. exercises is not Let's so let's see what the American analysis on the Putin speech is now. I was struck by by that idea that maybe Putin never intended to come to the negotiating table. And it sounds like we have Ian back. Ian, I want to go back to the the question that I tried to ask you before, which is this reference Greek, Greek, to Ukraine Greek, being a puppet for the U.S. and this threat for U the Ukrainian government to cease military operations in those separatist areas to stop the Russian genocide, uh, as Vladimir Putin calls it, in those areas. How much is misinformation playing into all of this? And what is the real picture of the violence on the ground? The real misinformation is me forgetting to fucking run the top of the hour ad break and then telling you you can avoid those ads if you no longer want to see those ads all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars for five uh, ukrainian dollar i keep forgetting to run the ad i'm running it now here it is any attempts at some kind of diplomatic resolution to this it looks like russia it looks like putin certainly wasn't interested in that and if you look at the narrative that's being portrayed uh, uh you know to the russian public it's that the ukrainian military is is on the offensive i mean we even saw the russian military today talk about two russian armored personnel carriers even if you're wrong, it's the right stance to say there's almost no chance they'll invade rather than the U.S. media saying it's happening, it's inevitable, it's going to happen tomorrow, it happened already, war, 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 exactly. But the problem is a lot of people personally have like been invested in that narrative, so now they're only fucking, they're not coming in here to, to actually hear well, the yeah, analysis, they're coming in here to be like, oh, I'm right, and it's really fucking gross, and it's really stupid. I oftentimes talk about how uh, I oftentimes talk about how people view and contextualize the news on, on the internet debate space and how annoying it is, okay? How annoying it is that, like, the only way that, to be fair, you bragged about being right, too. Yes, I did. I did. And I still am. A lot of people don't fucking see this because, and I probably shouldn't have, okay? Let's be real. It's, it's just like fucking annoying to gloat. But I changed the title to Russia has yet to invade Ukraine day 12. It's now day 14, by the way. My editors keep forgetting to change it. But um, I changed the title to fuck with all those people that uh, are, are like, you know, running oh laps God, so and uh, freaking the fuck out and saying, Oh, dude, you know, you were wrong. You were wrong. But they still haven't fucking invaded. So I am still right. And if they do end up fucking invading, then I'll be wrong. They want you to be wrong so bad because they've been wrong every time they believe the invasion dates that America keeps putting out. Yeah. If they don't invade, I'm right. And if they do invade, I'm still right. Wait, what do you mean? No, if they do invade, then I'm fucking wrong. My analysis was incorrect. The likelihood of Russia Thank invading you Ukraine is, is, is insane to me. It would fucking destroy Russia. States. It's so unpopular it's in Russia. The there are polls that have been conducted in Russia right now, okay? When Crimea, when Russia annexed Crimea, Vladimir Putin celebrated, was celebrated for that decision. Nationalism grew in Russia. They loved it. They were like, this is a great idea. This is a great thing that you did. Thank God you did this, whatever. Those very same people are completely against Ukrainian invasion because it's so fucking stupid. It is so, it, 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 it's a war of attrition that Russia will lose. Gross. I mean, they might not lose. They, they could overtake Crimea, I mean, uh, not Crimea, they could overtake Ukraine inevitably, but it still doesn't change the reality that like the sanctions would ass fuck them. And on top of that, like the actual war would be incredibly fucking costly. 
Spice. My fear now is that they're going to say, oh, Donbass is a security risk, so we have to take it over. We have to take over the Donbass region uh, because it's, it's presenting a security risk for our Russian uh, citizens that live there or our Russians that are living there. And, it, and that is, I, in my opinion, that's unacceptable. Take okay. The w -I -N. Hassle. Because that is like you're you're adding in uh, additional territory, and that is expansionist. That is not fucking Crimea like. Okay, that's different. Hello from a Kansas Democrat. Of course, they're not gonna go to fucking exactly. Kiev like the way that the American media is hyping it up because that would be fucking silly as shit. But it doesn't matter. People saying that Russia has the capability to do certain things on certain days is being mistaken for people saying that an invasion is going to happen on that date. Five and then when it doesn't happen, people say another invasion prediction didn't pan out when one was never made. Capability does not equal prediction. You're telling me that America has only been saying Russia is capable of invading Ukraine? Because even then they would be incorrect. Because America is not fucking capable of, or not America, Russia is not capable of fucking invading Ukraine. You just justify Putin's plans for two weeks? What? Five months of pep hang away. Okay. I'm going to repeat one more time. I do not agree with what Vladimir Putin is doing and doing a repeat of Georgia, okay, in Eastern Ukrainian territories. This is a separate conversation to have than Crimea, Stop. okay? What's going on in Eastern Ukraine is a civil war that has turned into a proxy war as a consequence of Russian involvement that is now being used as a fucking political posturing operation internationally as a geopolitical conflict. That is what's going on there. There are Russian people that want to separate. The Russian government is helping them, okay? Because they want to expand on that territory. There's like mines there. It's big. There's some, some industry there, factories there. That's the reason why Russia is... Uh, interested in in expanding into it okay. but ultimately the greatest thing would in this situation the greatest thing that would shut down all these conversations would be neutralization okay that's it neutralization that is what we are looking for that's the goal that's what should happen and that's well, it sorry. Okay, is that good? Is that helpful for some of you? I, I, I think I've repeated myself so many times, but let's, uh, let's listen to the Vladimir Putin uh, speech now. But um, the, the Russian state media, Ria, uh, is now reporting that uh, President Putin uh, told both French President Macron and the German Chancellor Scholz that he will uh, sign that recognition of that Donbass region. Russia is capable of invading the Ukraine. They would steamroll into Kiev if they wanted to. There's even been NATO analysis about this and the fact that NATO mobilization would be too slow. However, they wouldn't be able to maintain the occupation of Western sanctions. Exactly. Russia, that's what I've been saying for fucking months and months and months. months Russia is not fucking capable of having a, uh, launching a counterinsurgency, uh, uh, urban counterinsurgency warfare in Afghanistan in its fucking backyard. That would destroy them on top of the fucking sanctions that would ruin Russia, and even some European countries. This is precisely why I've been saying it's fucking ridiculous to assume that Russia is going to go in and, uh, and invade Kiev. Okay? A lot of Western oh, leftists think that this is some Hearts of Iron 4 game where Russia is going to blitz Ukraine and they keep invading other countries. If Russia got involved in that, it would wreck Russia like Afghanistan did the USSR. Putin and Russia knows this. There's no real reason for them to take all over Ukraine. All of Ukraine. It's just exactly, exactly. It's just, it's so fucking stupid. Thank you. Um, it is being used as geopolitical conflict internationally. It's kind of bullshit. It is a geopolitical international conflict when millions of Ukrainians flood into Western Europe. 
Yeah, that will be a fucking international geopolitical conflict. The point of this, uh, the the point of the problem here is that like diplomatic solutions are available. They've been available since day one. And the issue is that no one wants, I mean, European trade partners of Russia want to have diplomatic solutions. Ukraine wants to have diplomatic solutions sometimes. And do you know who doesn't want to have diplomatic solutions to this conflict? I'm sorry to say this, but Boris Johnson and Joseph Robinette Biden, okay? Let's go, Brandon. The Mac attack. Those are the two motherfuckers that are literally like, nah, no, nah, fuck that. They're, they're invading. They're literally invading tomorrow. Please, they're invading tomorrow. They're invading tomorrow. It's going to happen yes. again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Really shouldn't speak on it when you're clearly biased. Uh, having a personal attachment to Ukraine. This is true. That's the other part of this pro uh, problem. Like, I, I am Ukrainian at heart, okay? I stand with Ukraine. I kneel for the Russian flag when the Russian yes. national anthem comes up. And I stand up, okay? I stand up. I'm, I'm cocked. Hard as a motherfucker when I think about defending Ukraine. I have said on the record time and time again that Russia, a.k.a. Western Ukraine belongs to the Ukraine. Okay? Or Eastern Ukraine. Sorry, not Western Ukraine. I fucking keep fucking up East and West. God damn it. Russia? More like Eastern Ukraine. Am I right? Exactly. I've and said this. Crimea Biden belongs again. to Turkey. And the entirety of Russia belongs to Ukraine. All right, let's watch this. Uh, in that report, that Russian state media report, it does cite the Kremlin. Uh, so, again, unconfirmed by it's NBC amazing. News, not verified by NBC News, but Rus one Russian state media outlet now reporting that uh, President Putin will recognize that Donbass region uh, independent of Ukraine uh, and uh, that he will sign that recognition. So uh, an indication of the announcement that we think we may get from President Putin at some point this evening here in Moscow. Please have Mark Ames or Derek Davidson on. I should have Mark Ames on, honestly, because, uh, I mean, he's been pretty good on this. If Ukraine's liberals are openly questioning Zelensky's fitness to lead now, you have to wonder what, is, uh, what his far well, more formidable are, domestic opponents, hardline nationalists and Ukraine security structures, oligarchs on Zay's wrong side are thinking and doing. And this is exactly what the fuck I've been saying for the past month. Okay? America has never done this before. America has never fucking literally like beefed up war talks, armed and trained radical factions in a country that actually do not have a lot of on the ground support, but definitely do have, uh, but definitely do have fucking support within higher levels of government as a consequence of their ties to people like John McCain and people like in the American military. Okay. Interesting. If you say Vladimir Putin is bad three times, Putin will invade Ukraine. Interesting. Are you going to watch this speech or talk shit to straw man? I'm going to get to the speech, but I, I already, you know what my take is. I think it's an escalation and an, an expansionist to claim that like Eastern Ukrainian territory belongs to fucking Russia and that uh, they're, I, I am still, I am worried that they're going to move troops further into Eastern Ukrainian territory and say, it's actually Russian territory. There's Russian people here. We must do this to protect the interests of Russians that are living there. So I am, I, I'm against that. That is already, that is already a uh, uh, fucking, like the first step in that process is independence. And then it's security concerns, okay? I know what this looks like. Donetsk and Luhansk are not fully controlled by pro-Russian separatists. There are Ukrainian troops on a front line that splits both areas in half. This will allow Russia to deploy troops in Donbass in order to defend territorial integrity of DNR and LNR. Exactly. 
it's independence that comes first. It's the recognition of independence that comes first. Then it's fucking troop presence. It's then it's full blown fucking uh, uh, annexation of the territory. Like, and that is not acceptable. Former Russian state joins Russia. Ooh, scary. No, you can't just say that, dude. There's like a fuckload of Ukrainian people that live there. That's, that's ridiculous. And their lives have been fucking upended for the past, like, however many years. Like, 15,000 people have died in this fucking region. They're constantly fighting against, like, nationalist forces in Ukraine are clashing against fucking separatist forces that are backed by the Russian government. That shit sucks, dude. That's unacceptable. That you're, you're crazy. So... Ultimately, like that is that is an act of that is an aggressive act against uh, Ukrainian uh, Ukrainians that live there. That's an invasion. Like I I don't disagree with that. Um. So, like I've said, I mean, this is uh, a a way more aggressive stance than anything that we have seen thus far. Okay. Anyway, let's continue. Наша цель, цель нашего сегодняшнего совещания заключается в том, чтобы послушать коллег и определить наши дальнейшие. Isn't this a strategic move? A country that has territory conflicts can't join NATO, bro. I don't think France and Germany would ever allow Ukraine to join NATO anyway. Okay. With the source today, who said? Like, just you don't need like of territorial uh, issues. Okay, it's not happening. I don't even think America wants fucking Ukraine to join NATO. I think America wants a weak Ukraine. Okay, I was going to respond to like Big Bad Joel or whatever. I wrote a tweet out and I fucking forgot to blast it because I drafted a tweet to him because he asked me a question um, about like, what are you saying? Uh, it, like, what are you what, what are you implying here? Like, what are what, what kind of manif uh, consent is being manufactured here? And that's, I think it's a really good question. Uh, Big Joel said, I haven't been watching your streams on this, so I'm not sure what the idea is here. Are you contending that the CIA is trying to manufacture consent with the possibility of a Russian occupation of Ukraine? Consent for what? What I mean is, wouldn't Russia actually occupying Ukraine be the consent creating thing? What is the U.S. government gaining by dangling this false information of a non-event over the world? Genuine question. So I think the real problem here, or I think what the, what, uh, and I do think that's a genuine question, for the record. I don't think that's like a fucking bullshit question i don't think it's like someone being like mm -hmm, just curious like why do you not admit that nato is a defensive allegiance or whatever okay i think that that is a genuine question Putin so what i personally believe and this is speculation okay you know look at the sign above me it says vladimir putin is bad now now imagine this part of the process is me speculating i don't have access to vladimir putin's brain i am just simply looking at the the geopolitical interests at play okay my speculation is that while America most likely would not allow NATO, uh, most likely would not allow Ukraine to join NATO either, okay, because of, you know, a nuclear power, because NATO being an aggressive, uh, an offensive imperialist fucking uh, a base building project against the USSR and now Russia, uh, being at uh, Russia's doorstep would be a, an egregious act of war against Russia, which wants territorial sovereignty, which wants uh, understandable uh, autonomy, okay, which also has expansionist interests. Vladimir Putin does have expansionist interests, for sure, okay? Because of that reason, though, it would be nuclear holocaust. If NATO uh, invoked Article 5... And brought in international forces to Ukraine and fought against Russian forces. Takes. That would I be nuclear holocaust. Like mutually assured destruction, nuclear holocaust, two nuclear superpowers duking it out. Okay? So that's just the truth. And that's what Joe Biden knows. I, I don't know what Joe Biden knows. He branded is probably fucking brain dead. So but that is part of the reason why. That's part of the reason why this is just simple posturing and doesn't go beyond that. Right? So now that we now that we brought that part up, what do I think America stands to gain from this? America stands to one weak in Ukraine, so they are more susceptible and 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 more interested in uh, the the help that Western nations like Canada and America are offering Ukraine. Okay, 
If you're weak, uh, you can be used as a weapon against an enemy, a foreign adversary of America's that is that we have decided is strong. Okay, um, Kurds know this. Kurds are wielded as a weapon usually in the Middle East, and America is doing exactly that with uh, Ukraine in, in this moment. Okay. There are real fears that Ukrainians have towards uh, Russian, uh, Russians encroaching on Ukrainian territory, okay? But America does not give a fuck about the legitimate interests of Ukraine. America does not give a fuck about Ukrainians, okay? It's just, we'll give you more aid, we'll give you more aid, we'll give you more guns, and you can weaken our, uh, you can weaken our foreign adversary. Now, the secondary part about this, you need, people that keep coming in here and saying you need to stop, about, uh, stop talking about foreign policy is my funny, is the, is the funniest Mr. fucking take. Daddy. Dude, you are literally a chatter. Like, I don't, I don't know you. You've learned things that you've come in here and learned from me. I've consistently talked about foreign policy. My takes have always been anti-imperialist. It is, it, nothing is new. What has changed is your opinion, okay? You are now matching... You are now matching for the first time ever what you have learned from American history that you've learned here that you agree with. You are now trying to apply it to contemporary American politics. And instead of applying it appropriately, your, your, your brain wiring is, is uh, unfortunately too hyper-focused on you being a labor aristocrat living in the uh, imperial core that in and, and believing that America is still or American imperialism is still a civilizing force. That's not new. Okay? Max voting age of seventy when? They're dying soon. Is Putin planning to months. weaken the Ukrainian economy, then move in? That's a good question. I think Putin cares more about uh, overtaking uh, eastern territories rather than the entirety of Ukraine itself. I do not think that Vladimir Putin has interest in like taking over the entirety of Ukraine. Possibly uh, just the, the eastern territories. Maybe in the future, they might want to move to the entirety of Ukraine, but that's like 10 years in fucking, 10 years in the future. And I also do not know uh, what Vladimir Putin is thinking. I do not have the capacity to understand his brain. I do not, I can't read his fucking mind. Okay? Hassle. So, let me explain something here, though. Ukraine, Ukraine, has internal political problems. Now, one thing that Amerabrained Westoid idiots, okay, can never comprehend is that a country is not a monolith. You do this all the time. It's, it's hard not to think this way. It's hard not to feel this way. But the unfortunate reality is that Americans have been brain broken into believing that every country is a fucking monolith. And Americans have been brain broken I'm into thinking that... Their Sorry governments, foreign countries' governments are actually operating at the behest of their interests, of the citizens. You live in America. You want health care. You're a leftist. You recognize that neither party actually has your best interest at heart. Right? Oh so you have to understand that Putin operates in a similar capacity and there are plenty of fucking Russians that disagree with him just like there are plenty of fucking Russians that disagree with the Ukrainian administration and its actions. There are plenty of Ukrainians that disagree with the Ukrainian administration and their actions. So what America does best in this situation is turn foreign governments into a fucking monolith and then pump that information out through every fucking avenue that you can ever hear or watch and then turn around and take some of the most reactionary and most violent factions, most nationalistic factions, just like we did in South America. Okay? Just like we're doing in Ukraine right now, just like we did in Afghanistan. We take some of the most violent, nationalistic, awful factions, we train them, we give them weapons. I have a friend who was there just and then we ago. take their defenders and people that have sympathetic situation. ties to those violent fascistic factions and we plant them into positions of prominence within that government now the azov battalion itself is is a nazi group okay and ukraine has a ties uh, ukraine has a history with uh, allegiances to uh, the nazis uh, as a consequence of hating 
uh, you know, USSR more than the Nazis and thinking that, like, maybe if we align with the Nazis, then, you know, we could have fucking, you, uh, the maybe they will think that we are not Slavs, but instead uh, Ubermensch as well. Did, didn't happen, didn't pan out, whatever, right? So that still very much exists in Ukraine. That still very much exists in Ukraine, but it's not as popular, okay? But it can be. That's the problem. It can be. It has the capacity to be. Because countries like this, especially when they're fucking bordering a country like Russia, are quick to just go down the nationalistic, fascist fucking attitude, okay? Keep it up. And already, we already have these factions that are working within the National Guard. We already have these factions working within the National, uh, the Ukrainian National Guard. The Azov Battalion uh, has already put its tentacles into uh, the military of Ukraine, the military power of Ukraine. That's why you see them training grandmas and shit on uh, American television without anybody mentioning that they literally have Nazi memorabilia on their fucking uh, tags and shit. Okay? And you also, you also see by now, Pog. their sympathizers in positions of power in Ukraine. And that's how this works. So now, now it, it's not, I'm not overblowing how big the Azov Battalion is. The Azov Battalion is only one part of this, okay? But the sympathizers, the nationalism, the, the nationalistic mythos that exists within Ukraine is what is more important here. And America uses that to their advantage, okay? Yeah, just like the right sector, exactly. That's the fear. Okay, that's the fucking Asshole. fear. The Azov Battalion is like Ukraine's Taliban? Exactly. Russia is a passion of right-wing extremism, though. I agree. I agree. I understand. But I, what I don't understand is why supposedly uh, open-minded progressive liberals come in here and go, well, they're not really Nazis, or how many Nazis are in fucking Ukrainian parliament, actually? El Gigo. Like, that's, that's the issue. That, like, what are you doing? Like, you're such a, you're, you're, you're such a fucking defender of, like, American interests that you're, you're going to avoid what America has done time and time again and is trying to do in Ukraine? Are you willing to be joined the military and eat your words if Russia does invade Ukraine? Maybe a bet, since you have a lot of money. Okay. To bring you back to the Joel question, the Ukrainians are targets of the consent being manufactured. It's their consent the governments that continue to ally with the West. So, what I'm trying to state is... A weak Ukraine, a weak Ukrainian government that is unpopular is a beautiful opportunity for American interests. Why is it a beautiful opportunity for American interests? Because they can goad Russia into That's taking action. Chance. Okay? That's it. That's, the, that's my take. And this is speculative. This is what I am... Uh, this is speculative. This is what I am uh, I'm fearing. But America gets to, America gets to fucking sell weapons. Dude, I swear to God, I'm going to ban fucking Mega one of these days. Like, it's just never, never a good fucking tweet. Come on, dude. Just stop. Okay? America gets to sell weapons, and America gets to quite literally weaken one of their foreign adversaries by, uh, by, by pushing Ukraine as a pawn into taking more aggressive posturing against Russia who will, of course, understandably want to defend its own country, will want to defend its own territories, who also simultaneously wants to fucking expand, certainly. Are you saying that the U.S. wants Russia to invade, uh, invade Ukraine? Oh, 1,000%. 1 fucking million percent. Oh, it would be so good. Oh, Jesus Christ. It would be so good for America. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? They're like, oh, please. Please, please invade Ukraine, please. Months. That would be so fucking poggers. Bad. That would be so fucking sick. Oh, oh. Okay, that's, that's how I feel. Yes.
has words. Okay, man, you said this shit 20 times already. Let's watch the video. Even, even fucking brain broken Moldovan Mama Liga is like annoyed with you fucking shitters who keep fucking repeating the same talking points that I have to address over and over Ukraine again. Ukraine is not just a neighbor, neighboring country to us. It is an inherent part of our own history, culture, spiritual space. When, when Vladimir Putin says this, I don't know why the fuck people are like, oh, dude, he's saying he, he's going to take over the entirety of Ukraine. No, he's not saying that. Like, that's not what that is at all. Okay. It's, it's true. Four months, let's go. Like, that doesn't mean he's like, f this doesn't mean that they're like, he wants to take over Ukraine. He's going to take over the entirety of Ukraine. They are our comrades, relatives, not only colleagues, friends, but also our family, people we have blood and family ties with. Since ancient times, people from ancient southwestern Russian lands were called themselves, were calling themselves Russians and Orthodox. That was happening until 17th century when part of these territories rejoined the Russian Empire, the Russian state, and after that. It seems that we know all about this, that we are talking about facts that everyone knows, but at the same time, we need to have understanding what is happening today to explain motives and aims that Russia has. We need to... You're being intentionally so dense and I don't get it. Wait, what do you mean? Like, do you want me to fucking deny the history? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, uh, when he's repeating historically accurate fucking takes, what is the, what is the anger here? Like, what do you want me to do? Like... What the fuck? Money. What do you what, what do you want? Say a couple of words about the history of this matter. I would like to start by saying that the modern Ukraine is. By the way, this doesn't mean that like fucking he he has a he has a right to take over modern Ukraine. Okay, I just want to repeat that because a lot of people don't understand what my position is on this, and it's fucking way more complex. It's easy to misunderstand my position if what you're hearing about my position is not something you can comprehend, not something that you've understood personally, not something you've actually given the fucking time of day to. I've been saying since fucking day one that of course Russian expansion into Ukraine is unacceptable and not good and it's bad overall that's why diplomacy is something that we need to be doing diplomatic avenues is the way we need to fucking continue this I've said this from day one for the past months and months and months and now Four motherfuckers are going to come in here and probably gaslight me into saying oh, it's not true you never said that you actually want Russia to fucking invade I do not okay I do not completely was completely created by Russia, to be more exact by Bolshevist, Bolshevik communist Russia. This process has started. Wait, what? This matter. I would like to start by saying that the modern Ukraine is completely, was completely created by Russia, to be more exact. Just unfollowed you on every platform. This is bad, my dude. UK being in Europe is like Cuba being in North America. It's an island, bruv. UK is next to Europe, not in Europe. Since you forgot to blast off, can you unbound me? Oh, no, nah, dude. I lost a big fall. one, dude. I lost a big one, bro. What the fuck? This guy that's been following me since fucking 2021. And an oi, bruv, too. Dude, buddy, it's, it's done. It's fucking done, dude. Fuck! Is leaving it yellow when it's mellow, but flushing it down when it's brown a praxis? <sighs> I disagree with you, but these people are like personally hurt by your takes on this, Lamau. Yeah, I don't know why. Because, well, I do know why. I do know why. <laughs> the reason why people are, per they feel like they're personally hurt is not because they're like Ukrainian and like uh, have misunderstood my positions or something. Okay. The reason why they're hurt is because like the only way for them to analyze the only way for them to analyze politics is by taking up a, a team sport role on this right. issue that is way more role. complex than that okay and and using like the easiest fucking examples that they can like put inside of their brains like well vladimir putin is hitler and this is just like hitler uh this is hitler it's hitler is the same thing that's going on 
Okay, and and they just the only way they can like comprehend uh, politics, especially complex, uh, you know, foreign policy. You legit said Hitler invading Austria wasn't bad. No, you fucking idiot. I said in the grand scheme of things on the list of horrible things that Hitler has done. If you were to fucking bring up Austria as uh, Austrian annexation, you would look like a fucking clown ass. But the only reason why you would use that, I never said that it was like, I never said that that wasn't a big fucking deal. The point is you're using that to make a comparison to Hitler. Well, you may to, to draw a line between Hitler and Putin. Okay. If Hitler just did that, Without all the other shit that he did that you actually fucking uh, consider to be horrible and, and uh, it, uh, un, unbelievably evil, you would not ever think of Hitler as a bad I guy in the same fault. fucking way, okay? You would not know who, what his name is. And that's really fucked up. And unironically anti-semitic hassle to just like it, it, to to revise the holocaust into just like hitler's annexation being the fucking primary uh uh you know the the primary awful thing so genocide is the line then what if putin decides to take more of ukraine there's no way this person has been in here, bro. I was analyzing this stuff long before you came around. You were right about a lot of stuff. This just isn't one of them. People in your audience are capable of thinking it for themselves. There's no way this fucking idiot is like actually hearing yeah. the things I'm saying. No, genocide is not just the fucking line, you idiot. I already said once again that like taking over additional parts of Ukraine is unacceptable. What the fuck is wrong with you? Shut the fuck up. If you're not going to listen to what I'm saying and you're only going to get your takes by like going to another fucking content creator and hearing what he has to say about what my position is, then get the fuck out of here. Don't be in here then. Because or, or when you're in here, shut the fuck up and listen. Okay? It's d deeply disturbing. It's deeply disturbing that you just come in here and make me repeat the same fucking talking point that I just repeated like three minutes Whoa. ago. But you just came in here and you're only... Uh, you, you, you came in here like three minutes after I just mentioned it. And now all you got is like a uh, fucking whatever critique that you just learned that you're repeating. Are you liking Horizon? God damn. How long until an idiot say you didn't condemn the Armenian genocide? I'm surprised yeah, people haven't fucking brought that up. And then people say, this dude is big, Matt. Like, that's Fedora Battlemaster. Like, yeah, dude, you, you were, you, you got me. I'm big mad. Oh, anyway. Continue with this. by Bolshevist, Bolshevik communist Russia. This process has started almost immediately after the 1917 revolution. And Lenin and his supporters did it in a rough way, if we talk about Russia. They were alienating Honestly, parts we all of get like historical territories of Russia. NGL, they should hit America. And millions of people who lived there, obviously, no one asked anything. Then before the Great Patriotic War and after it, Stalin added to the USSR in handed over to Ukraine some land that belonged to Poland and Hungary. And as a compensation, Stalin gave some ancient German lands to Poland. And in the 1960s, Khrushchev decided to take Crimea away from Russia and also gave it to Ukraine. That's how the territory of the Soviet Ukraine was formed. But now I would like to draw your attention to the initial stages of the establishment of the USSR. I think it's of utmost importance for us because we have to start from afar. I would like to remind you that after the October Revolution of 1917 and the civil war that followed, Bolsheviks started building a new state. And they had some differences among them. Stalin, who in 1922 was
You're acting like the US is the bad guy here for some reason. Is the bad guy here for some reason? Again, there is no shot. There is no fucking shot you're in here. I mean, look at the top, dude. Look at the top. It literally just says in, in bold fonts, Vladimir oh, Putin is bad. I don't know what else to tell you, syndrome. okay? Vladimir okay Putin is bad. I don't countries. know what to do. Should I get a fucking forehead tattoo that hopefully will allow you to understand and have a more charitable fucking take to what I have to say here? Some of you are Hold so fucking stupid. It okay. hurts my very soul. Okay? What do you want from me? What do you want? Well, I just want you to listen. I want you to shut the fuck up and listen charitably instead of like doing the thing that everybody hates that everyone does on Twitter, which is ascribe a position that you do not have to you to make bad faith, uncharitable fucking takes in the chat. It's incredibly selfish. Please. 14 months of the best brain rot. At the same time, Secretary General of the Soviet Communist Party and People Commissar on the Merits of Ethnicities decided to build the country on the principles of autonomy, thus giving to the Republic, to the future administrative units, wide authority when they were supposed to join the state. Lenin criticized this plan and he suggested to make concessions to the nationalists the way he called them back then advocates of independence. Do you think Vladimir Putin Basically, is that was idea about creating a confederation and give the right to every nation for self-determination. That was the basis of the Soviet state. Dude, this is so incredibly fucked up. You can never, you can never have a conversation about this. Popular streamer Hassan Piker publicly defends Hitler invading Austria while live to 40,000 viewers. They found it again. They found another way to fucking do this. I did not defend uh, Hitler invading Austria, dude. Redditors who literally... Topo the hour. Hassan gets canceled every week. Haven't seen it on Reddit yet, but here we are, though. I'm not sure what Hassan's stance on Russia taking uh, Crimea is based off this video. Oh... It's fucking insane, it's dude. Who is this fucking piece of shit, action. dude? Let's see. Let's look at this fucking piece of shit's uh, uh, a personal profile real quick. Also, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. What a fucking piece of shit. R slash world news Andy. Like, motherfuckers who can't, like... Died. Motherfuckers who can't, like, win... Uh, who can't do anything. Try to, like... Oh, that's weird. That's crazy. That's... Oh, oh, another fucking Destiny viewer who now realized, like, he can't fucking do this shit on LSF. So now he has to go to a public freakout, dude. That's fucking wild. What an incredible thing. You f you're literally terrorists, dude. You're like internet terrorists. You're so fucking shitty and sad. Oh, my fucking Lord. That's so interesting. Here. Go fucking downvote this, okay? I'm, I'm fucking... I just... I don't want my name to ever be mentioned on fucking Reddit. Actually, no. Don't do that. Don't fucking do that. Don't brigade public freakout. I'm sure those moderators are smart enough to fucking realize maybe... Oh, no. Never mind. They've already, like, been mirroring it. Dude, I mean, dude, this is not the best way to deal with your mental health problems, okay? If you're a Destiny watcher, deal with your mental health by touching grass, not by trying to fucking actively and deliberately, uh, I don't know, not trying to actively and deliberately fucking post this uh, shit clipped out of fucking context, okay? People in your community have a right to disagree with you and say they're just calling us these years. Dude, are you fucking stupid? People disagreeing with me in my community is one thing. People literally fucking posting something out of context to make it seem like I'm a fan of Hitler when what they're saying is fucking ridiculous and actually unironically making it seem like uh, that was the worst thing that Hitler ever fucking did. That's the, that's what I'm angry about. Since NATO enjoys love to fact check so much. Imagine your source of happiness no being uh, is waiting for a streamer to say some easily misconstrual shit. Yeah, I mean that's it.
Oh, anyway, let's continue. First, in 1922, it was enshrined in the Declaration on the Establishment of the Soviet Union, and then, after the death of Lenin, it was also There's enshrined There's another in the public freakout pose? ...of the USSR of 1924. <laughs> and right away, here we have a lot of questions. It raises a lot of questions. Reddit is one of those places where they're like... Reddit is one of those fucking places where they're so, so, so fucking aggro on, you know, r slash world news and all this other stuff. Uh, the other, the post was already at negative elbows before we looked at it, so don't worry about it too much. Those other subs aren't nearly as deranged as LSF. It doesn't even fucking matter because, like, it, it doesn't matter because it, a little bit of a little bit of push on one end can like very easily change the outcome of a post and like totally fucking brigade it. And first of them, and the main question, why were they making all kinds of concessions to the nationalists at the outskirts of the former empire? To give to the administrative units that were haphazardly formed huge territories, oftentimes that had nothing to do with them. And they were giving these territories with the population of historic Russia, and these administrative units were given status and shape of the state entities. And once again, this begs a question, why did they have to do such generous gifts even the most blatant nationalists couldn't dream of, and at the same time give the Republic a right to withdraw from the new state without any preconditions? At first glance, it doesn't seem clear. It seems like madness, but only at first glance, because there is an explanation. After the revolution, the main goal Bolsheviks had was to keep power, to stay at power at any cost. And for this, they went to any length to sign humiliating conditions of the Brest truce when the Kaiser's Germany were in the dire economic situation and the outcome of the World War I was already almost decided. And by giving any concessions to the nationalists inside the country, from the point of view of the historic destiny of Russia and its people, Lenin's principles... He's criticizing the USSR, but Americans around me still call him communist. Dude, if you think... Vladimir Putin is a communist? I don't know what to fucking tell you. Okay? I, I just, like, he's not. He has literally talked about how Marxist-Leninism is, uh, is, is a, is a threat. Uh, it, that w the Western world needs to fucking, uh, fear as well. He's one of the wealthiest dudes on the planet, okay? He's not even remotely socialist. You're a psycho, okay? You're a complete psychopath. He's also not a good guy. He's not a good guy. He's a bad person, okay? More importantly, he's a bad fucking dude. Did you admit you were wrong? What, what, I wasn't wrong. He has not fucking invaded. Shut the fuck up. Motherfuckers are like, dude, I've been wrong this past week. And now he's... Uh, motherfuckers are like, literally, I've been wrong this past entire fucking week. And it doesn't matter. And I'm still fucking wrong until this moment, Okay. But it doesn't matter. You should inv you should admit that you're wrong. You should admit that you're wrong. So weird, dude. Also, I do not fucking uh, consent to being restreamed to all the fucking weirdos uh, that literally look. You can restream my content all day, every day. Obviously, I have entire fucking channels that are uh, dedicated to this shit. I have like YouTube channels that are fan made and fan operated. But if you're restreaming me and then your fucking fan base is coming in to like try to get me canceled, then fuck you. You do not have the consent. You can't do that. And if you are doing that, I hope you get fucking banned. Straight up. Like, even if it was like, even if it was just like fucking normal shit, even if it was normal shit, like all you were doing all you were doing is just like watching and restreaming, then that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But all you do uh, is restream and then have your fucking fan base come Sexy. in and try to uh, get me banned or try to do PR campaign, like uh, PR campaigns against me. It's very strange. And then you also have like these fucking weirdos, man. You are always drunk. Oh shit, two months. Oh, fuck.
suppose, of building the state weren't a mere mistake. That was much worse than a mere mistake. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990. It's also impossible for someone to have a stance change on new information like the more recent Putin posturing. Exactly. I've already, um, I've already addressed that. Vladimir Putin recognizing the independence of, of Eastern Ukrainian territories that have a lot, that have a, a, a chunk of Russian uh, people living in them, but are not uh, majority Russian, it, very different than Crimea. Um, those people, those people, hairline is moving back just like Ukraine's border, and that's the motherfucker. First of all, there it is, dude. Incredible to listen to you. There it is. You are a 28 month subscriber. I did not fucking uh, hit. Nations. I did not hit your All ass. Talk about NATO is a smoke screen. It's not a breach of international law if a sovereign country wants to join NATO or the EU. Prime gang hassle. That's the one that fucking gets you clapped up, baby. That's all right. Uh, I've been, I've been, uh, you know, I've been, I've been enjoying his like schizo posting in the chat for the past, uh, you know, four years, five years that he supported me, but, um, My mom but, says uh, to call you know, that's, reason. uh, that's entirely separate. You, you have crossed the line, unlike the Russian forces, which have yet to cross the line, the Ukrainian border. You on the other hand have, okay. And, uh, 28 months of avoiding the ads and the 29th month, you're actually going to start getting hit. August. Not shelling, okay? Not shelling, but uh, you're going to be hit with the top of the hour ads now at the top of every hour because you're not going to be able to resubscribe because at the top of the hour, there's a six second ad break. It's coming right now. And if you no longer want to see those ads, hairline, this uh, like this is what happens whenever I have like fucking weird psychopaths in here, okay? Restreaming my content like this. This is what happens, okay? This is what happens. It's like, Dude, your, your mom would literally give up a significant portion of her wealth to have sexual intercourse with me one fucking time. And you're over here being like, your hairline is receding, la mal. Like, I I'm sorry, dude. You look like shit. You literally look like shit. You watch debate lord fucking YouTubers. You are a fucking weirdo who uh, never leaves his fucking cave basement. And you're, you're out here being like, dude, I, I think you look bad. It's crazy. It's, a, it's like denying reality in front of your fucking eyes, okay? Anyway, let's continue. Like I was saying, um, Hassan, no matter what happens, you weren't wrong in attempting to reframe things and encourage diplomacy. This is the only answer. Agreeing to the sincere negotiations with European nations at the helm. The lessons learned is not to feed into the dualistic framework and be open about Russia's past misdeeds. None of it changes the need for diplomacy and regional security agreement. Yeah. Yo. The people that say, uh, uh, the people that are like struck a nerve, I got you. Um, that usually just like come from, uh, other streamers, uh, that are watching, like that's their fan base. I'm going to be all right. You can try, and you do try desperately as best as you can. Oh, by the way, let me just serve the fucking ad real quick. You can try desperately to, like, make my day worse. Okay? And many of you do. And maybe that'll, you know, allow you to escape how fucking horrifying your reality is for a brief moment. Okay? Like, maybe. It'll make you feel a little bit better that, like, you're using your fucking uh, sock account to come in here and like brigade for your favorite streamer that you're watching currently watch me. It's just not going to happen though. Your life is not going to be better. You're going to be just as pathetic and just as sad. That's it. And like I've said time and time again, I'm running the ad now. Like I've said time and time again, Islam. I believe that there is a diplomatic solution here, which is the neutralization of Ukraine. 
That's it. That's what I've said since day one. That's what I believe in. That's the best, least uh, uh, bloody uh, way to deal with this conflict. Okay? Stop listening to people put positions in my mouth. Stop listening to fucking people clip chimping me. If you come in here, the only thing I ask of you, and I will, this is the last time I'm going to, like, we're, we've been banning people regularly, but the one thing I ask, if you come in here, is just to be charitable, okay? It's just to be blah, 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 charitable. About brain rot. You once said this has become absolutely obvious. Of course, what happened in the past cannot be changed, but at least we have to talk about it in an honest and direct way. Without any political agenda, without giving any political color to it. I can only add that the ideas of the current political realities, no matter how beneficial they might seem currently, under no circumstances cannot and should not be a basis of the building a state. I'm not blaming anyone, accusing anyone of anything. The situation in the country back then and after the civil war and before the civil war was incredibly difficult, was critical. And now I only can say that that's how it happened. That's a fact, that's a historical fact. And as a result of Bolshevik policy, the Soviet Ukraine was created. And we have every reason to say now that it's Ukraine created by Vladimir Lenin. He's its creator and architect, and it's fully confirmed by the documents from the archives, Rego also including the decrees, <coughs> Lenin's decrees regarding Donbass that was added to Ukraine, and now great. <sighs> the sentence demolishing all the statues, all the monuments to Lenin. They call it decommunization. Capitalism. You want decommunization? Well, we are quite happy with that. But we don't stop halfway. We are ready to show you what would mean actual decommunization for Ukraine. What the fuck? Coming back to the history of the matter, I would like to remind you that back in 1922, at the territory of the former Russian Empire, the Soviet Union was established, but the reality showed that keeping this territory and ruling this territory using the principles of confederation deems impossible because it had nothing to do neither with the realities nor with the historical tradition. And the Red Terror and switch to the Stalin's purges and the monopoly of the Communist Party, nationalization, planned economy, all that in reality was turned into a formality, nothing more. Principles that were declared but didn't actually work. In reality, Soviet republics had no sovereign rights. None. In practice, what was created, strictly centralized, unitarian in its character. State that was centralized. Stalin implemented not Lenin's ideas, but his own ideas of how state should be built. But changes to the founding acts, to the constitution, he didn't make any changes in this regard. Lenin's principles about building the Soviet Union were not reconsidered technically. It seems there was no need in this. Under totalitarian regime, authoritarian regime, everything worked well, and it looked nice from the outside. It looked more than democratic even. But still, it's a shame. It's a shame that from the formal foundations our state was built on, they didn't clear out this odious, utopic, brought about by the revolution, but destructive fantasies. And in the future, how it often happened, no one thought about it. The leaders of the Communist Party seem to be confident that they managed to build a strong governing system, that using this policy they managed to finally resolve the no, national issue, but replacing the notions, manipulating 
the public moods. Could cause dearly. The infection of nationalism did not disappear, and that bomb that was undermining the state with this infection of nationalism was just waiting for its hour. When talks about the U.S. are just like the online anarchist dude, do you 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 would think they would love him? Yeah, but he's also not like, you know, he he's currently not into uh, LGBT. If he was, I feel like yeah, he'd have more anarchist. Uh, He'd have more anarchist support, maybe. Also, anarchists uh, like to align with the State Department. So. <sighs> to come. Because once again, any republic had the right to withdraw from the USSR. In the middle of 1980s, against the background of Raising problems, crisis of the planned economy, the nationalist issue that was caused not, some, not by some ideas of the Soviet peoples, but by... He's literally an authoritarian, diametrically opposed to anarchism. Man, chill out. We're making fucking jokes, okay? We're making jokes. I, I know. I know he's authoritarian. Oh, God. Well, I mean, there's uh, anarchists who say ACAB and then support NATO, so, you know, that, that's another joke, which is uh, the anarchists uh, for NATO. Growing appetite of the current leaders. Also, anarchists don't know jokes. That's sorry. I was being, yeah, that's it's ableist to assume that an anarchist can understand a joke. Escalated. But the USSR leadership, instead of analyzing the situation and making thoughtful decisions in the economy and in the political system, in the governing system. They were only talking about restoring Lenin's principles about... I'm sorry, I shouldn't be shitting on anarchists. Like, I literally showed Noam Chomsky earlier. I was Noam Chomsky posting earlier, okay? It's just like anarchities that are fucking annoying. ...self-determination. More than that, inside the Communist Party, there was a struggle for power in each side, wanting to to expand its support started to encourage this nationalism. They were trying to play with it. They are, were promising anything to this nationalism. And when they talked about the democracy and bright future based either on the market economy or planned economy, but when in reality people were getting poorer and poorer and their deficit got stronger, Okay, this is fucking, uh, this is boring. Get better content, Putin. This is like, uh, I mean. You should get Noam on the show like Misgift did. He helped miss a ton with his worldview with Noam Chomsky. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. No one from the authority was thinking about tragic consequences. And then they went down well the path of... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like historical context, I got it. And the place to talk about the constitutional right or give definition of what citizenship is, but still it begs the question, why in those difficult conditions they needed to make the situation even less stable. But the fact is still a fact. These couches of the evil inside of something boring. The arc of the speech is that the modern Ukraine is a fiction and should be Russia. Well, he succeeded in fucking uh, duping me into not understanding that point because he is fucking incredibly boring. Half of it is like accurate history. The other half is, I don't think he's saying that, by the way, but maybe I'm wrong. I think what he is instead saying is here are the here is the lead up. Here is the historical context that you're never going to fucking hear ever. And of course, it's going to be biased towards his current predicament and what he wants out of Ukraine. Okay. And it's just like the the translation is is awful too. Bro, the milady fedora stank is ripe in chat today. Yes, it's fucking uh, awful. This is okay. Listen, listen. This 
this speech is is whatever. If he rec if they move towards recognizing uh, Eastern Ukrainian territories as independent territories, then the follow up to this is going to be, oh, we have to defend them. We have to defend the Russians there. And then they're going to fucking uh, annex, okay? So that is a fucking shot. That's a shot fired. That's way more... I know he recognizes it in the speech. That is way more concerning than, like, American State Department saying, Oh my God, I can't believe that fucking uh, Vladimir Putin said he's gonna eat Ukrainian babies tomorrow. Literally what happened? No, Crimea is not a good example of this. Georgia would be a better example of this, okay? Than Crimea. And before people say, well, uh, you know, the Georgia territories that were annexed, like, or Jordan territories will be attacked first. Doesn't matter. Crimea is not a good example of this. No, the shadow was right. Making it seem like Ukraine is a made-up country is the favorite thing to do for them. Do we, uh, do we hear it every day here? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about Atlanta, Georgia. I have a different take than you. Therefore, I must go full rage bane and let's have child and spam how wrong you are. I will cream immediately following your ban as I make a Reddit post on mobile with my left hand. Yeah. Anyway. Um... This is actually, uh, this is actually concerning and it is a step against, uh, diplomacy. It is a step. This is the first fucking time and, and, uh, gearing up for this, uh, very moment is the first time that I have legitimately changed my position and now do think that Russia would potentially, or Russia is making moves towards at the very least Eastern Ukrainian territories. The Intel overall on Russia moving into Kiev is wrong. It's silly. That's not going to fucking happen. I still don't think that that will happen. That would be ridiculous. The material circumstances of uh, the material, the material circumstances that would render uh, 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 Russia uh, to be a crippled shell of what it is, as a consequence of the, as a consequence of the sanctions, and as a consequence of a war of attrition uh, that that would destroy uh, the Russian economy would make it impossible. It would make it the dumbest thing that you could do uh, with very, very little benefits of taking over Ukraine. Okay? Now we are talking about the rational self-interest of world readers. Putin has won this game with his logic several times now. What are you going to do? More useless sanctions? 